scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There is a way that we rise in this kingdom. Please listen carefully. There is a way that we ascend in this kingdom. The protocol for spiritual growth, for advancement was given by Jesus himself. And the Bible says that he mentored and built a people over a span of three and a half years. And he turned them into signs and wonders. By the time we get to the book of Acts, the Bible says these are they that turn the world upside down. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want you to know that every aspect of this service was designed intentionally to achieve something spiritual in our lives. Are we together now? This is, we are following an exact spiritual formula that if you will submit yourself to the foolishness of spiritual things, you will marvel and you will wonder at what your life becomes. These are not the opinions of men. These are ancient principles that were followed by many and produced tremendous wonders in their lives. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We'll be seated shortly, but I will just pray while I was sitting there. I saw that there were a group of people that God was releasing the grace for prayer and supplication. This is what... I began to see it was like coal oil was being poured on the coal and it was catching fire this is what I was seeing in the spirit and now I'm praying because there are individuals some of you are ministers some of you your prayer life has gone down this is koinonia I stretch my hands by the spirit of grace as many inside the balcony the overflows following from whatever nation as many as the spirit of god will initiate into this dimension of spiritual reality take that grace right now in the name of jesus christ some of you are ministers some of you are being raised to be prophets and apostles let that engracing for prayer rest upon you in the name of jesus christ help them please in the name of jesus christ and everything sitting upon your prayer life to insist that you will not rise in the name of jesus and by the spirit of the christ i clear it out of your life i clear it out of your destiny in the name of jesus christ The Lord is showing me a door in the spirit and this door has been closed for a long time refusing to open this is what I'm seeing I truly believe that God is speaking about someone a family in the name that is above all names I call upon he that holds the key of David 
and I speak over every closed door no matter how ancient no matter how long that has refused to open over your life your ministry in the name of Jesus we command that door open now 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 be open now in the name of Jesus open up Gita and Gita be open now Tonight is a very serious night. The Lord is opening my eyes in a vision. I'm seeing people standing, but I'm seeing their faces covered. This is what this is what the Lord is showing me. Please, I want you to pay attention. Pay attention. The Lord brought us here to build us. You see, when the face of a man is covered in the realm of the spirit, number one, there can never be visibility for such a person. Number two, the doors of favor would be closed over that person. I'm going to minister the power of God and I want you to bring those people out. Those at the overflows can just come to their projector stand. We need to tear off that veil. Hari Sedakatusia. Now I stretch my hands, whether by the power of witchcraft or activities of ancestry, everything Kalita Paroto Stubata that is responsible, bring them out, that is causing your face, that you will not be seen, is, 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 is affecting your visibility in ministry. There are people in ministry here. You have integrity, you are walking in grace. But there is a veil over your face. There are businessmen. There are captains of industry. Right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare for such people in this auditorium and outside, please bring them. Right now, may the fire of the Holy Spirit burn those veils right now. Burn those veils right now. Turn it into a prayer. Every veil covering the glory of God upon my life. It says, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory. He called him the lifter up of my head. Bring them out. Everyone whose glory has been covered for no matter how long. You are immersed in the anointing of the Holy Ghost and it must give way now. You came to church. This is the house of God. Lift your voice and pray. Thou, O oh Lord, are the shield for me. You are my glory. You are my glory. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. The lifter up of my destiny. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, We're still praying. Hear me. Except God did not send me. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice that there is any kind of yoke, over your life, over your ministry, I stand by the rod of the apostolic. I stand by the rod of the prophetic. I declare judgment on strange spirits, judgment on foundation, judgment on yokes of darkness. Surely there is an end. 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 
Oh, I decree again in the realm of the spirit. Let God's people go. I prophesy an exodus over your life from every realm of captivity. I'm saying it by the spirit. I declare the power that will not let you go must let you go this night. Bring them out. The force that will not let you go. This is Koinonia. The force that will not let you go. I stand by the God of heaven. The God of Shesuron. That rides upon the wings of the wind. I declare must let you go now. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Holy Ghost is ministering to me. There are people in business here. Every time good things are about to happen, there are forces, familiar spirits, that stand to shut doors. I'm praying for business people. I stand by the unction of Jesus. And I declare, anyone here in business whatever power has refused to let you advance in the name of jesus at the count of three comes under fire one two three go 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 release your destiny release your businesses in the name of jesus christ he says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies submit themselves. The last prayer point and we'll sit down. Every long-standing infirmity in your body that will not let you go. Hear me. I don't care what it is called. Blood disease genotype issues recurrent things eating your finances destroying the destiny of your family at the count of three you will shout jesus and there will be a miracle of healing right now all kinds of spirits that are the back of mysterious infirmities are you ready now at the count of three shout that name that is above every other name one two Three, shout Jesus. Be healed. Be healed. Blood condition. Be healed. Heart condition. Be healed. Migraine. Be healed. All kinds of bodily infirmity. Let me pray one more prayer. Whoever is sitting on what is yours, between now and the end of this month. I stand by the God of heaven and by the spirit of prophecy. Please hear what I'm saying. Again, I repeat, whoever is sitting, exchanging your destiny, by the God of heaven, I declare, my God will uproot them. My God will uproot them. My God will uproot them. all of you in front here i decree and declare standing for yourselves and your families the spirits behind the mysterious tragedies of your life i speak as one sent let them go now let them go now let them go now release their destinies now they came to the house of god let them go now by the power of the holy ghost Hallelujah.
Who is this man? Come. What do you do, sir? So I was into business, but nothing is moving. You were me. into business. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is the house of God. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing snakes from head to toe. This is what I'm seeing all around you. The Bible, this is the house of God. If we cannot solve problems supernaturally, we are wasting our time here. Sir, I'm saying it to you in the open by prophecy. The same way you are standing here, this is the same way you will stand here. Your life will change in a way that will surprise you. I stretch my hand. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus, let it open you to new dimensions. In the name of Jesus, every legal basis upon which the devil is oppressing you and your business, I come by the blood of Jesus and I declare it is over right now. Regina who is Regina I'm hearing a name Regina you are wearing a yellow dress Regina is there someone like that Regina who is that what's your name where are you coming from I'm coming from Jai here from where Jai you believe in Jesus yes Come. sir your family is about to experience a very strange miracle stand up listen let me tell you this Believe me when I tell you, people of God, there are people who are sent. There are people who are sent with an unction and sent with a grace. It is not the anointing that is available that blesses you. It's the anointing sent to you. Can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus Christ, for you and for your family members. Right now, every power that will not let you go, here in the house of God, I declare by the Spirit of God a new chapter opens for your family now a new chapter opens for your family now hallelujah don't be embarrassed we'll sit down shortly but there's a I will tell you why the Lord directed that we fast today huh. Emeka you are a businessman. Where are you? A Mecca, you are a businessman. You are a tall gentleman. A Mecca. Who is there? Is there someone like that? Come. What's your name? Huh? A Mecca, sir. What do you do? I do business, sir. Where? Here in Abuja. In Abuja. Yes, sir. Your doors have been closed, but the Lord wants to open those doors. Come. Let me tell you this. Look at me. It takes more than the ability to provide value and to provide solutions. In as much as that is the basis of your reward, there will have to be a prophetic dimension that gives acceleration to the works of your hands. Hallelujah. You believe in Jesus? Yes, sir. Father, I pray you have brought this gentleman. You are a Mecca. Come. What he says to one, he says to all. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. Go and prosper. Now, I release the grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you, my friend, I pray for you. God is the helper of men. I pray that you will enjoy his help. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. One last prayer. The Lord is ministering to me. And he's showing me a family here. You didn't come alone. But this has been one, two, three, four, five miscarriages. One, two, three, four, five please who is that person five miscarriages and the lord wants me to minister to that person and will go straight to the ministry of the word while that is happening there is a gentleman not a lady a gentleman the power of god will come upon him and you shout under the anointing loud to the hearing of everybody please bring that gentleman out <laughs> My dear, look at me. You are the one. Is your husband here? Husband, where are you? Why did you leave your wife to come alone? The word is. Let's celebrate the husband as he comes to stand. Don't be ashamed. The Lord himself is visiting that family.
my friend under the anointing the bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous therefore i speak to you everything that has stolen away your joy and your testimony as a family i command it to let you go now in the name of jesus let me pray miscarriage i want to pray don't worry i'll pray for you wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name something is coming on your wife it's over now now two of you over now i'm seeing a spirit that is back of her miscarriage i challenge you by the god of heaven let her go now pray for you father I stretch my hands ah, I'm seeing fire leaving my hands and just coming on you everything that will not let you be fruitful is a command whatever will want you to disobey that command I open up your wombs in the name of Jesus and according to the time of life i decree and declare return with your miracle children regardless the medical report we stand by the god of heaven and we declare oppression in the area of fruitfulness come to end now in the name of jesus christ please return back rejoicing my god will surprise you it will surprise you in the name of jesus christ One prayer while you are standing. Father, my portion for this night, if I receive it by faith, it will not elude me. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be tired of praying. We'll be seated shortly. My portion. God is a God of portions. Are you praying? hallelujah please be seated if you can god bless you tonight we're going to be brief in this place but i believe with my heart all my heart that the testimonies that will come out from tonight's meeting will truly bring glory to the name of jesus Pastor Israel, I'm seeing oil being poured on your head. In the name of Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands. The grace for signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. May that grace come upon you. Let it distinguish your ministry. In the name of Jesus. You will walk in tremendous dimensions of signs and wonders in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen malachi chapter 2 and verse 2 while seated i want us to take a minute or two to just thank the lord for his marvelous hand i cannot begin to tell you the great and the awe-inspiring things that the lord continues to do in and through our lives across the nations of the earth please give us that scripture malachi chapter 2 and verse 2 if ye will not hear and ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name saith the lord of hosts it says i will even send a curse upon you and i will cause your blessings 
yea i have caused them already because you will not lay it to heart there is something about god's desire to be glorified that when we experienced his his manifest presence his miracles his signs and his wonders we must be very intentional about giving him glory whilst you are seated in one minute can you say thank you jesus for that which you continue to do in my life for that which you continue to do in this ministry you have so lavishly honored this ministry within the time that we have been in this city you have shown yourself mighty and all across the globe salvations healings tremendous miracles transformation by the power of your word we lay it to heart to give you praise this is the lord's doing cannot be the doing of a man and we thank you we thank you don't be tired thank him for the numerous promotions advances in the spirit equipping you with sufficient spiritual knowledge and understanding helping you to stand strong preservation we thank you we thank you we lay it to hearts to give you glory in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in Micah chapter 4 when you begin to read from verse 1 the Bible speaking through prophet Micah he said in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the Bible says people or nations shall flow to it verse 2 is my point of interest it says many nations not a few many nations will come and say come let us go up to koinonia the mountain of the lord and to the house of the god of jacob the bible says he will teach us his ways so the end time manifestation of the house of god is a place of light a place of spiritual illumination please listen carefully you have to make a covenant with yourself and your destiny that you are going to submit to the word of god and place irreplaceable value on the word of god it says i commend you to god and then to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified we must place premium on the word of god it is god's instrument for transformation it is god's instrument for signs and wonders habakkuk chapter 3 when you read from verse 3 and 4 verse 4 amplified says in that light is the hiding place of his power the power of god is hidden in his light John chapter 1 and verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae chapter 1 and verse 9 Colossians 1 and verse 9 and he prayed bowing his knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that they be filled number one with the knowledge of his will number two that they be filled with all wisdom and then number three spiritual understanding there is no hope for the believer who does not contend for illumination illumination to the degree to which um, you are able to drive away every darkness around your life you know when you get born again you are introduced to the ministry of the Holy Spirit the Bible says and among the many things that the Holy Spirit does is to guide you into all truth are we together now and when he the spirit of truth is come the bible says he will guide you he will guide you he will reveal to you the precepts the ways of god so every time we tabernacle week after week this is not just a convergence of christians honoring a spiritual activity it's more than that every opportunity that we have to be exposed to his power his grace our hearts must be intentional because it is the entrance of his word that gives light 
And then the Bible declares that it gives understanding unto the simple. Your stamina and your dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon spiritual illumination, light. Isaiah 33 says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time. You have to know the ways of God. The ways of God define the modus operandi of the kingdom. God has a method. God has how he lifts. God has how he restores. God has how he blesses. God has how he keeps the saints in victory. He says, now thanks be unto God, which causes us always to triumph. And so our assignment as ministers of the gospel is to expose the body of Christ and those who have been given and are planted under our spiritual um, jurisdiction to provide the requisite level of spiritual intelligence, the requisite level of knowledge that number one helps you to know the Lord and then number two equips you with the keys it takes to walk in victory experientially are we together that means that after a while of exposing yourself to the truth of god's word you must come to a point where you are strengthened you are equipped equipped ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 9 down to 11 the bible says it's for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists pastors and teachers why for the equipping some versions say equipping others say maturing perfecting of the saints we have all kinds of professionals in our midst we have doctors we have business people we have politicians and, and so on and so forth you are not equipped by just giving every and any tool you are equipped by giving the tools that you will need to excel imagine with me for instance that a farmer goes to the farm and the equipment that you give him is a syringe is an injection are we together now a bandage those are useful equipment but not for farming so the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 from verse 16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Then it says, in all wisdom. The word of Christ can dwell in you richly, but not in wisdom. The wisdom part is that you are equipped methodically. You are equipped in a way and manner that supplies the spiritual arsenals um, such that you not only have these truths, but you know how to use them if and when occasions demand are we together the end of knowledge is to be able to solve problems to provide solutions with the information that you have any information that is not able to solve your problem is almost useless are we together so this is not an advocacy just to communicate random truth mm -mm. there is an intentional project to equip you with the requisite body of knowledge listen carefully please listen carefully when it has to do with the knowledge of god exploring the person of god it will take eternity we will never exhaust him even in heaven there is room to come up hither we will continue to know him as his glory unfolds but as far as our excelling in this kingdom is consigned please listen there is a finite body of spiritual information that we need you can handle the truth that makes for your victory here and now the narrative that the truths we need to excel in life are so many and infinite is not an accurate narrative you can understand the principles that make for speed for restoration for favor for increase just like a student continues to learn even after graduation but there is an exact body of truth that is responsible for awarding him a degree in a field and he can exhaust it and hold a degree as a testament that i have faithfully exhausted this body of light so our advocacy is to bring us to a point of accuracy spiritually 
that you know what keys are responsible for what outcomes this is the whole idea of victory you know i said it at the first service the inaugural service that many believers have truth it's like a house how many of you know that a house has many rooms and not all keys open every door is that true yeah. if you are in that house and the only door that is opened is the door to your living room if what you need to do is just to relax that's fine but if you need to use the restroom and you do not have the key that opens the restroom you are in trouble if you need to go to the kitchen and you do not have the key that opens the kitchen you are in the house but you will still be frustrated so the Bible says and I will give you the keys of the kingdom these keys control favor they control speed they control your prayer life week after week God begins to hand these keys to us so after a while of immersing yourself in this truth you stand surrounded by mysteries like chariots and you can take on life with confidence you are not shadow boxing you are not hoping listen the laws of the kingdom are so powerful they are protected by god's own jealousy are we together the bible says how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall the preacher go except he be sent except he be sent so please do not take lightly and do not take casual every opportunity you have to learn the ways of God God is taking away from our lives the religiosity around information that cannot produce result I know something about prayer I know something about fasting I know something about night vigil I know something about communion I know something about the name of Jesus and we have little little um, dimensions of scattered spiritual truth that are not synergized to produce victory in our lives so our Christian experience becomes one that is full of fear because we do not know the the, the arsenals that were designed to command what level of victory there is a random pursuit listen the faith life can be an interesting adventure when you are equipped with knowledge you're no longer ignorant you know you know what it takes to bring favor you know what it takes to open closed doors the goal is never for a man of God to stand and become king of kings and lord of lords over your life uh -uh. the goal is that by the election of grace you are immersed under this atmosphere of knowledge and that you are equipped to the point where you now become a savior yourself on the strength of the truth that you know and you have result after result it now begins to strengthen your confidence you get to a point where you are no longer doubting you are not hoping does this work does this not work you know he said i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded hallelujah are you blessed the saints are built in this kingdom through the communication of the word more specifically the exegesis of doctrine doctrine is the name given to the course content the course curriculum that builds the believer to a point of stature and maturity in the spirit so more than the miracles and the manifestations in as much as those things are very important but we must submit ourselves to the methodical approach of spiritual growth where we not only know the Lord, but we understand his ways. They are called the mysteries of the kingdom. Jesus said, I am the way. I'm not only a person. I am God's authorized method. You can study Jesus the way as the pathway to victory. Please run away from that Christian narrative that continues to endorse and justify failure in your life provided you are knowing the Lord it downplays the place of excelling in life and makes it look like there is no need you believe that narrative no matter how well intentioned you will use your lifetime paying the price for it
I am come, he said, John chapter 10 and verse 10. He says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Then he says, I am come that ye may have life. That is a level. Then he says, and then to have it more abundantly. So there is life and there is abundant life. Life, the peace that you have with God based on the impartation of eternal life. More abundant life is eternal life in your spirit alongside a victorious life on earth. That is abundant life. I made up my mind years ago that I will never lead a people who excel in their spirit work prayer fellowship with god and then become failures in life and their lives become a reproach to the victory that was won when jesus said it is finished he did not only mean the sin problem was finished he also meant dominion had been restored are we together now you have to believe the whole counsel of god many times some of these erroneous doctrines come out of a combination of pride and frustration pride because we do not open ourselves to learn more frustration because we exhaust the body of knowledge we know and so we are not able to command other levels of results in frustration we now build a theology around our failure to explain away the possibility of complete victory a believer can have complete victory you can love the lord and grow in passion while your finances also grow while your influence grows while you enjoy longevity and have peace with your children this is abundant life are we together if it is true that the gospel and the kingdom life was designed to be useful to everyone then it means it must capture within itself the ability to solve every problem we find on earth. I believe in the whole counsel of God. And by the grace of God, I will not fail to bring to us spiritual truth after spiritual truth. My assignment is to labor with the Spirit and in partnership with other vessels across the body of Christ to sieve and piece together the working knowledge of the word, the spiritual principles that are assigned first for our knowledge of God in experience and then for our excelling in life and to serve it so passionately and diligently to whoever is interested that if and when you embrace these truths and you believe them and apply them you know, many times we say one word from the Lord can change your life. That's not exactly true. One word from the Lord that is accurately taught, understood, and engaged with understanding. That is the word that produces. You read your Bible, the Bible says that the sower came and sowed the word. Satan himself came and uprooted the seed. Satan is not afraid of the word. He is afraid of the union of the word with the believer who understands it. Remember that his assignment, his office in heaven was the light bearer. He was the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom. He's not afraid of the word. What Satan is afraid of is your understanding the word and your engaging it. Because the power of God is released at the instance of your understanding and applying, not just receiving. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. So let me just use a few minutes to touch on a topic that I believe would help to accelerate our growth. Psalm 65, verse 2. The mystery of prevailing prayer. The mystery of prevailing prayer. I want to teach you something about prayer to add to your spiritual arsenals that will command victory after victory in your life. The Bible says, O thou that hearest prayer. This immediately tells you not everybody can hear prayer. O thou that hearest prayer. It says, unto thee shall all flesh come. This statement is both an acknowledgement and a recommendation. The writer is recommending that among the many people who claim to be able to hear and answer prayer, through my research, I have found out 
that there is only a single individual who sustains the ability to hear prayer and my recommendation is all flesh if you really need your prayer answered there is one who hears prayer he says unto thee shall all flesh come the subject of prayer is a very interesting one because every religion regardless what they believe they believe in prayer as the medium of communicating with the divine almost every religion believe that there is a reality beyond the three-dimensional realm they have all kinds of propositions that have been strengthened by their experiences but altogether they believe that there is some force or some deity above and beyond the realm of science that can come into partnership with men here and now and produce dimensions of victory that is not given to ordinary men so the subject of prayer is not new across religions across all kinds of faith practices but then the challenge many times has been that believers become frustrated because after dissipating hours and energy in what we know and call to be prayer it looks to me and to many of us in our experience that the amount of energy even physical and emotional energy that is being exerted into this activity we call prayer doesn't seem commensurate to the results that follow are we in agreement so week in week out we have the house of God across this city, across this nation, filled with professing believers who are praying in some way, many adding with fastings. But when you compare the level of energy, the level of zest and zeal and emotional strain that we go through in that activity we call prayer versus the result that comes from it, it doesn't seem to add up. And yet the Bible tells us that God is love the Bible tells us God is Abba, that he is more willing, if he did not spare his son Jesus, he's more willing to give us all things. Are we together? Luke chapter 11. The disciples began to study the life and the ministry of Jesus. Now, until Jesus came, John the prophet, who we call the Baptist, had his disciples some of them later became the disciples of jesus theologically speaking and they saw him pray they saw him do a lot of things and um leadership sessions and here's what he said he said when a spirit leaves a man jesus is teaching now when a spirit leaves a man that that spirit goes through dry regions looking for a place of refuge why is that so there's no time to explain it to you you see God, spirit beings have spirit bodies. There is something called the law of territory. You are only at ease in a territory when you are made up of the same material with that territory. Are we together now? That means if you are in heaven, you will never be at peace until you are made with the material of that atmosphere. Are we together now? These disembodied spirits you see, when they left their original estate, you know what that means? Because angels and these spirit beings can translate into different states. Not just like men that were here, always human. Now, to perform certain assignments, they would have to translate, downgrade themselves to certain levels. They did that in rebellion and when they tried to return back to their original estate, they were hijacked. So till today, all these embodied spirits are in a state of restlessness because they are not in heaven and they are roaming around the earth and in the earth here they are violating a law of territory because they do not have a material body for their spirits to find rest are, are you understanding it now so constantly these embodied spirits are in a straight loitering across the length and the breadth of the earth and the way god created the human body is that there is a possibility of multiple spirits coexisting in the same body it is not only one spirit that can coexist one man had a legion you remember in the bible that's to tell you how scarce accommodation is for these demons that a legion can make do with one body to find rest so don't play games with your body that's to tell you 
Bodies are serious real estate issues in the realm of the spirit. Oh, yes. When demons see bodies that are available, they don't play games with it. No. A body has now prepared for me. So, when these spirits find expression in a body, they find some level of rest. They can occupy animals like they, they entered the swine. Is that true? But the most comfortable body is the human body why because humans are the zenith of god's creation and their level of complexity can allow the demons to find expression the presence of will emotion and intellect can allow them to find expression they may not have that level of liberty with animals so there is a constant search for bodies but here's where i'm going the bible says when a demon leaves a human body it gets back into that state of restlessness are we together it goes around dry regions and not finding a place here's what the demons will say like the prodigal son the demon will say i will arise and go back and go back to my house the demon is still calling the place he left my house that means in his mind there is still a possibility of returning and then the bible says when it comes it will find that body swept it will find that body clean but it finds it empty and the demon is kind enough to invite other demons higher than itself to build fortification to return to that individual so that the latter part of that individual is worse than the beginning herein lies the mystery behind people who get free momentarily and then it looks like their situation multiply because they did not know what to do with the house of god my house shall be called the house of prayer there are six reasons i've written here why all believers must pray there are six reasons i've written here we'll take that for tonight and pray if you do not understand um, do you know do you know please look up do you know the average believer prays largely to ease the guilt of looking like an unserious christian they are not really interested in the results subconsciously there seems to, if you are a believer and you are living among other believers, you know, prayer has a way of intimidating you. Someone is praying seriously and that prayer is judging your own seriousness. You keep looking at yourself and in response to that sense of judgment, you find a way of conforming to that religious activity as an act of appeasal. You're not interested in the results. The reason is because most of our prayer is not motivated by understanding. We have not been taught what prayer does. And so we just do it because Jesus did it. We just do it because it makes us feel spiritual. But let me show you six biblical reasons why believers must pray. Ready? Number one, the first reason, and those of you who are following from your homes, from every nation please do well to write it down so that you can teach others too we need to mature the body by helping them understand what prayer does the first reason why we pray is that god commanded that we pray it is a command two scriptures luke chapter 18 and verse 1 popular scripture i use it a lot when teaching especially around the subject of prayer this was a parable now in his earth work jesus used a lot of parables why because his listeners were not spiritual people they were not regenerated their organs of interacting with the realm of the spirit had not been developed through the ministry of the word and prayer so he had to employ parables to help them explain how the kingdom works and he spake a parable to this end the morale of the parable is that men everybody say men men here doesn't just mean the male gender men humans that humans ought always to pray and not to faint so it's a command 
the whole idea of the story is to bring us to a point where we understand the power and the excellency of prayer the bible says there was a city verse 2 luke 18 and verse 2 there was a city in a city a judge may you never meet this kind of judge in your life in jesus name my apologies to those who are those of us who are judges and magistrates i'm your friend there was in a city a judge look at the description of this kind of man the bible says which feared not god that means it's difficult for god to speak to him number two he neither regarded man you couldn't bribe him you couldn't come and beg what sort of a man is this so this is scene one and then scene two the bible says there was a widow a widow is a supposedly a defenseless woman. her source of security and defense has been taken away from her he's teaching you the power of prayer and then the bible says she came to him that man avenge me of my adversary verse 4 the bible says he would not for a while but afterwards he said within himself my god that means there's something prayer does even to the most hardened situation if you pray with time there is an energy that prayer exerts that begins to change even the most impossible situations he says though i fear not god so the man is aware he's aware of his condition it's not just that the writer is telling lies the man is aware he's testifying here now that even though i do not fear god nor regard man verse 5 it says yet because this widow troubled me so there is something that prayer does to situations and circumstances i will avenge her lest by her importunity or the bible says her continual coming she weary or weaken me this is an illustration to show you what prayer does in the realm of the spirit that no matter how weak and defenseless you are if you can engage prayer consistently that it can do something in the face of situations and circumstances prayer is a command once you are a man if you are an angel and you are a spirit you don't need to pray but provided you are wearing this material body the bible mandates that we pray first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 second scripture for that point let's hurry up first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 apostle paul is speaking to the church in thessalonica and he says pray without season the word pray without season does not mean pray from morning till night every day you do that you become an irresponsible man you will not be able to fulfill other things the idea here is be consistent the power of prayer is not just in the activity but the consistency pray without season number two why should we pray according to first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 the bible recommends prayer as one of the strategies for fellowship with god and fellowship with heaven the bible says in this case speaking about praying in an unknown tongue it says for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto god now there's no time to contrast this with what the bible calls diverse kinds of tongues there are two different experiences when we come to the series on the holy spirit then we touch the gifts of the spirit then i will teach you this the bible um creates a dichotomy between what it calls the, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and the prayer language that was given to all believers this has been an age-long controversy in the body of christ as to whether it is all men that pray in tongues like all the other nine gifts um the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is not given to everyone but the prayer language it says for this promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children as many as are far off even as many as the lord will call when you read all through the books of acts every time the holy ghost came it came on all of them no reservation they were all filled with the holy spirit they began to speak whether it's acts chapter 2 whether it's acts chapter 6 to 8 whether it's acts chapter 19 the most classic sign or the most classic defense 
of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is found in Acts chapter 19. Maybe we just look at that very quickly just to clear the air on that. Verse 1, the Bible says, Paul having passed through the upper coast, the Bible says that um, he came to Ephesus and then he found certain disciples. Follow the discourse. Verse 2, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They were disciples. So you see, there was something about their teacher. Their teacher was not teaching them something. They said in our lecture, we've not received this. We don't even know that there's anything called the Holy Spirit. Surprise now, he said, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Now the lecture begins, verse 4. He said, John's baptism verily verily john baptized with the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him that is on christ verse 5 when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus the miracle now and when paul had laid his hands on them the holy ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied the bible tells us their number verse 7 the bible says and all the men were about 12 and they all received so i just thought to bring this in we have a separate series where we'll deal with that praise the name of the lord but just for you to know that when we talk about the prayer language of tongues we're not talking about the gift of the diverse kinds of tongues are we together fellowship with god when you begin to pray in the spirit it brings fellowship in fact the Bible says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God he says the fellowship that's where we get the word koinonia the sharing together the participation of the Spirit he says let it abide with you let it remain with you let it be with you when you fellowship with God, with God you fellowship with the Spirit there is a divine deposit that comes from God into you a transmission of power wisdom grace every spiritual virtue that makes for your excelling fellowship is very important are we together it is one of the tools for fellowship. hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you